What's good? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow back with the Boxing Clinic. And um, today I'm bringing you guys um, another uh, installment of the Boxing Rundown where uh, we go through some um, some headline headliners in, uh, in the sport of boxing real quick. Well, actually, this is going to be a little bit longer than usual. But, um, you know, just put it all together. Stop multiple videos coming through, you know, chopping multiple, multiple videos up. Um, save some time. And uh, first off, let's talk about heavyweight division. Um, Joseph Parker fighting this weekend, you know, a replacement for Huey Fury. Huey Fury is always pulling out a fight or some falling out of fight with Huey Fury. I just don't really care to even look forward to him fighting anymore. It was a good fight. I think it was the fact that Peter Fury couldn't come over and be a trainer because New Zealand uh, didn't grant him a visa or something like that because he had a, a felony on his record. So, uh, you know, that that is what it is. But uh, what about Joseph Parker being a real player in the heavyweight division? Um, I think it's open. You know, I, I wasn't impressed with his win over uh, Carlos Takeham, even though Carlos Takeham is an underrated, solid heavyweight. Um, um, you know, then he, he beat Andy Ruiz. He, he, he eked out Andy Ruiz, who was trained by Abel Sanchez and supposed to be in the, the best way to his life. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's some improvement there for Joseph Parker. I'm not... Uh, enamored with his talent but usually when guys get those titles you know they step their game up some they know what's coming for him and i look for him to step his game up pretty soon um uh, can he be the undisputed heavyweight champion at, at this point yes because um he has some athletic ability and some skills and one punch is all it takes and like i told guys before i'm not putting money on any of these heavyweights versus any any any, any heavyweight walking right now a guy one and zero can knock out some of these heavyweights. Even though they're they're bigger and they have some skill here, they're all vulnerable. They all have their chinks in their armor. Um, then that, that ah that takes me to um, Deontay Wilder. Um, he's he's been on a crusade of calling out all the other heavyweights. He seems like he wants to consolidate this heavyweight division and have all the belts in his hand. And a lot of people are you know are are not you know recognizing him for you know continuously calling out Anthony Joshua been eight months he called him out on Twitter yesterday he keeps calling Anthony Joshua out. he's called out Joe Parker he's called out anybody any and everybody that listen he's calling out those two guys because they have belts um Luis Ortiz has been you know he's the mandatory for Anthony Joshua they talking about fighting somebody else so like I told you everybody wants to be enamored and be happy with Joshua because he's in the driver's seat because he beat Vladimir Klitschko but actually the king I always say is Tyson Fury but right now um he's the active king of the heavyweight division um, he's the cash cow right now, supposedly. Um, but people, uh, people are just overlooking, you know, Deontay Wilder because people don't take him serious for whatever reason it is. Is it because he's windmilling or whatever? Because what, he took his time coming up, and uh, people are mad because he took his time coming up. But you can't be mad at somebody that's taking baby steps because if you do it right the first time and take your time to do it, take your time to do it right the first time, you got to worry about doing it over again and taking another step back. So I'm not mad at him. You know, people, you know, people were jumping on, you know, the Manny Pacquiao dick train. About when he, Dick Rodden train when he was calling out Floyd Mayweather and they was putting pressure on Floyd Mayweather from the people. Floyd Mayweather never, never cracked under that pressure. Now, Golovkin is putting pressure on Canelo Alvarez and people are trying to put pressure on Canelo Alvarez. Now that Deontay Wilder put on pressure on Anthony Joshua, everybody's just like, oh, fuck it, man. Nobody take Wilder serious or, or this or that. Joshua ain't got to do this. Uh, Joshua ain't got to do that. But like I told you, these double standards and these contradicting ass fans in the sport, you know, they can't call a spade a spade. If he calling the man out, Joshua won't acknowledge him. He making every excuse in the book. What do you call it? It ain't a bird. It ain't a stop sign. It ain't a glass of water. It's a fucking duck. Period. Um, Joseph Parker didn't want to push his day back in May to fight in July. So now Wilder called him out. Now uh, Joseph Parker is talking about he wants to uh, do a UK fight later this year and try to get Anthony Joshua fight. Like I tell you. Uh, the heavyweight division doesn't have any room for guys not wanting to fight top guys. There's only four or four top guys. It's Wilder, um, Joshua, no order, Ty, uh, Tyson Fury in the waitings, Luis Ortiz, and Joe Parker. Those are the only guys that really matter in the heavyweight division right now. And uh, they can't be like the welterweight division and, and fight A, B, uh, like other fighters, ever B fighters and B plus fighters because it's the top echelon fighters in the heavyweight division, and then it's a large drop off off them. It's a, it's some you know by the heavyweight division it's top guys and then it's like F guys under there, D and F guys under there, and um they can, they don't have that luxury of doing that and uh, now uh, as supposedly people say like Mike Tyson Joshua has bought the heavyweight division back in one fight let's capitalize on it and make some more big fights and put the light all the way on the heavyweight division um 
You know, Mike Tyson said Deontay Wilder ain't ready for Joshua. Joshua is this. Dude, get this dude some tap dancing shoes, bro. Man, I mean, Mike Tyson, you know what I mean? He's just completely turned around into a, a tap dancing coon. Let me call it, man. Uh, from, you know, tap dancing for, for Donald Trump to tap dancing around boxing and, and doing what these people say just to make a quick buck. At the end of the day, um, uh, Tyson was one of my favorite fighters. But at the end of the day, he, he ain't the Tyson no more. He's a, a business dude that's doing anything for a quick buck. Why you just can't back Deontay Wilder? I'm not saying pick him. But say, man, let's make the fight happen, Joshua. No, you know, Wilder ain't ready. Who the fuck is you to say if Wilder ready? So you want to see the heavyweight division continue to be stalled out with sorry-ass fights being put on. You should be the one trying to make the fight happen. Like, Joshua, let's see if you're the best. Go over to America and fight Joshua. You need to be the ambassador to get Joshua over here to fight. And so he can fight over here more often. Because, I'm like I said in my other video, once he fights over here, he get to taste of New York, Vegas, and California. He's not going to want to go back to the gloomy UK. With no sunshine. No offense. Love UK. But... He's not going to want to go back. He's going to try to make a career over there. Trust me. Um, seems like Freddie Roach is throwing out some lies out there. Um, Freddie Roach has said that on um, Pacquiao. I remember reading this a couple months ago, or maybe a couple weeks ago. Pacquiao had actually knocked out Jorge Linares, um, recognized as the best lightweight champion by the rankings. It's smart. Um, he was helping him prep for a fight. I can't remember what fight Linares said he helped him prep for. And Pacquiao and Freddie Rose said, you know, Pacquiao iced him. Uh, Jorge Linares said that's definitely false. He said uh, he was just helping him prepare. It was no knockout. I don't know why Freddie Rose will lie about it. Um, and Freddie Rose has been notorious for, for lying, dog, about, you know, yeah, let's make the Keith Thurman happen fight for Pacquiao. Turn around 48, 24 to 48 hours later, they make the uh, Jeff Warren fight. You know, oh, Pacquiao don't want to fight Danny Garcia. And, you know, he just throws different stuff out. Oh, I think Miguel Cotto can feet, beat Gennady Golovkin after watching Daniel Jacobs. I like that fight. Let's make the fight. Now Miguel Cotto's about to turn around and fight a comma guy. Like, you know, he's full of shit at the end of the day. But the point of this is um, they've been talking about Pacquiao coming down. You know, Laura Linares actually challenged him to a catchweight to uh, 140 pounds. And we heard that Pacquiao was too small for 147. Uh, even before the, the Mayweather fight, people were saying that. And his handlers were saying he's too far, small for 137. He can make 135 and meet uh, Vasalo Mashenko. He can make 140 and make Terrence Crawford and meet Terrence Crawford. We've been hearing, oh, Pacquiao's too small. We got to stuff him with protein shakes and food for so long. When will he fucking actually squeeze down to 140 and challenge somebody then? Since they feel he's too small for 147. Challenge some of me. I take the Lenore ass fight. I take the Mikey Garcia fight. They talk about him squeezing down the 140 to fight to meet Mikey Garcia. They talk all this shit to try to diminish the fact that he lost to Marquez. He lost to Mayweather at 147 around those uh, ballpark with Marquez. He lost. It ain't that he's too small. If he can make the 140, he would have been fucking made the 140. And um, like I said, I don't believe shit those guys have to say. Now, second to last topic, let's talk about uh, David Lemieux saying he knows the adjustments he needs to beat. Um, Gennady Golovkin, I laugh at that because there's no adjustment in his skill repertoire that he can do at this point. It's nothing that he can do. He can't do any. He can't be slicker. He can't have head movement. He can't become a better boxer. He is what he is. He's a, a puncher who moves straight forward with his head and his chin held high, and he's punching to try to give as good as he takes. And usually, as good as he takes, most guys can't take it. His power. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, there's no adjustment that he can make to beat Gennady Golovkin. Um, no way, no how, in my opinion. Uh, let's talk about these Chavez Jr. pay-per-view numbers. Um, let's end off on that. Um, you know, the number is over or under a million pay-per-view bots. And that's tricky because usually when Canelo fights, it's free in, in Mexico. Um, I don't know how much interest this fight is generating around the world. You know, I don't know if it's a million-dollar pay-per-view fight. Now, if the world was made up at, like, California, uh, Nevada, in Texas, and New Mexico, in that area right there, that little southwest and westward, I would say yes. But, you know, you go East Coast, you don't see too many Mexicans. You see more Puerto Ricans, um, blacks, you know, whites and stuff like that. But in that little area, you know, you just don't see that many uh, Mexicans as well. And I'm going to say it falls under a million pay-per-view buys because I don't think it's generating that much um, casual, um, you know, view, you know, casual, you know, audience. Um, it could do a million. It's single to my weekend. It's going to be a lot of people turned up, turning, tuning in. But I'm going to say it falls a little short under a million. And uh, that's just my prediction. We're gone. Shout out to everybody for supporting the page.